Hello everybody! It's Friday and welcome to Facebook Live today. I'm gonna just wait a couple of seconds so I can get my video going, but I don't want to hear my own voice. All right, hello, welcome TGIF everybody. I am home today with a sick child. We've had kind of a weird virus go through the house this week. Um, fever and all that so fun yay but she's my helper she's got the dogs locked up today with her hopefully they are cuddling her and uh are not going to bother us today's facebook friday is um based around the smitten mittens bundle i have had a lot of requests for this and this was my very favorite thing i think maybe my top two favorite things um when i first saw the catalog and i haven't used it as much as I thought I would, but I um, this week designed all my retreat projects and it, they are using this. And today we're going to do three different projects using this set. So that's what we're doing today. Um, if you'll remember, if you have not joined me before, over on my blog, um, starting right now, there is going to be a post with all three of today's projects with these two uh, sheets that you can print out. It has all the item numbers prices, um, the measurements, and everything that you need. Uh, there's a link at the bottom of the post for that. Um, also, there's going to be a giveaway this week. I'm going to give away a hostess set called Seasons of Whimsy. Um, this is in the holiday catalog, and you can only get it as a hostess or by entering my giveaway. There's a raffle copter there, and if you'll enter your email. And then I also am asking a question for some suggestions for future Facebook Live demonstrations. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you want me to use. What do you want to learn? Um, I like to have some direction when I'm planning these. So go over there sometime today after uh, this is over and enter to win this and, and uh, let me know if you have any suggestions. Now last week the drawing was for a share of the ribbon and a share of the embellishments and the winner is Laurie Chilton. Laurie, I know you and I have your address, so I will be mailing these out to you on Monday. So congratulations, Laurie. I hope you enjoy these. All right, um, before we get started, there's one other thing I want to talk about. Um, there's been a lot of discussion um, online about the Stampin' Blends, and uh, I showed you them one, one week during um, Facebook Live. They are our alcohol-based markers, and they are coming out November 1st for everybody. Um, the whole set is $120, I think, um, which is which is pricey. But if you love markers and you love Stampin' Up! and you um, are really curious and want these, one way to get them is to spread out the purchase over several months. And I've um, got a club that I'm going to be doing, kind of like my In Color Club. You're going to get everything um, by purchasing a little bit each month. And when you join my club, I'm going to send you an exclusive video tutorial each month along with two make and takes and an embellishment. Um, so the details to this, I have uh, linked that up on Facebook, as well as on the project sheets today, there's a link right here you can, if you're interested in the details of that, um, just type that in and you should be able to find it. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first thing that I'm going to show you, let's see, I need to get myself organized. The first thing I'm going to show you is a gift card holder, just a simple slide out gift card holder. And of course, this is the paper that I am obsessed with. I am probably going to end up with about 30 packages of this paper. Um, with all of these sheets gone <laughs> because I can't stop using it and there's only two sheets to a package so I um, love it I've actually am having a chair reupholstered for my living room right now in Buffalo check which is what this is called it's very popular um, if you've seen it on Pinterest it's everywhere and I'm completely obsessed so I um, am using red and black together I like those two colors um, for Christmas. Okay, so let's get started. Let me just show you quickly how to make the holder. Um, remember the measurements will be over on that PDF. Uh, let's see, I'll look down real quick at my measurements, nine by three and three fourths, and you score it at four. Very simple, nothing fancy. 
we're going to put a sheet of um, the DSP right here in the back leaving that you know little border around and then we're going to put a piece of my favorite DSP here in the front because it needs to be the star if you ask me and then I'm going to get my ribbon which is this is the shimmer black shimmer ribbon um, it kind of I was looking at today it's kind of um, almost looks like a galaxy it's got little sparkles in it and um, I use it a lot for Halloween and now I'm using it a lot with this paper so I'm just gonna use that ribbon to hold this together and I think actually when I first made this I, I stapled those sides under the ribbon which I don't know not um, isn't really necessary if you're gonna do it with a ribbon all right so there is the ribbon and then the inside part is just a piece of um, Whisper White cardstock. And you can um, attach your gift card with washi tape or a glue dot. You can see I just stuck it on with a glue dot. And so then I'm going to get this is called ah, Circle Tab. Why can't I remember that? Yeah, Circle Tab Punch. And I'm going to cut that out, punch that out. And I'm going to put adhesive on both sides. Now, just like every week, um, I have a, the hostess code for the February, I mean, February, my goodness, the October um, Facebook Live videos. If you place an order between now and Monday night and you use that code, I'm going to send you all three make and takes for free. Um, all right, so there, see how that slides in. And I'm going to cut out a heart in a minute um, when we get the big shot out to put right there. All right, so really quick and easy, simple. And that could just be a card, too. You could just do a card or a photo. You know, I, I like to do photo cards um, for Christmas, so that would be cute to hold a photo. All right, so let's cut the mitten out. Um, so this is the the framelit set that goes with the mitten bundle, and I like this framelit set a lot um, because you can use these without the stamp sets too. I've used them quite a bit for other classes when I haven't used the stamp set. Um, cute just basic mitten shapes and some other you know just snowflakes and stuff so um, really cool also I'm going to show you in a little while that some of these are embossing pieces they are not um, to cut out they're to emboss all right so I'm going to get let's see I have to make sure I cut out the right one so that would not be the right one we want this one I'm going to cut out the background in white and the front in real red and this week I usually just use my magnetic plate, but this framelit has a lot of tiny little cuts. And so in order to get that out, I'm gonna use this precision base plate. This um, is designed specifically for framelits that have all uh, these tiny cutting surfaces. Um, we've got uh, lots of them that are like this. It's more solid and you need a lot more pressure here to get all of these things in the middle. So that's what this one is designed for. Um, when I first got it, I used it a lot for everything. And a word of caution, don't do that because it does bend these framelits. They start to bow. And it also is really rough on your clear pla uh, clear plate. Uh, mine were suddenly like bending and cracking. Like, like I had never had that even happen before. And suddenly they were happening over and over and over again. So um, only use that for these. Um, these framelits that are really intricate uh, because it works really well. I do sometimes use just a um, dryer sheet. That's like the old school way to cut these out and um, put a dryer sheet underneath. But I will tell you that with this one, the dryer sheet wasn't really even cutting it either. It was really needing this, this um, platform. All right, so these are, I'm just gonna cut one of these little hearts out for the tab. You can use any heart you have, guys, if you have a heart punch or whatever. But this is from the mini treat bag. Uh, framelit collection I believe so I'm just going to cut them all together and when I have a very intricate die like this I actually am going to run it through a couple of times just to make sure it gets all the pressure it needs on all those pieces and before I even move the big shot out of the way I'll flip it over and see did everything cut it does look like everything cut out really well because you'll be able to tell if it didn't cut if you need to run it through a couple times sometimes you need to turn it or face it a different direction um, but it looks like it did just fine 
All right, so let's get those out of the way. And another word of caution, and um, when they first introduced the precision base plate, they said don't put it on your magnetic platform. And you can see I'm not very good at following rules, but I found out why. One of the reasons is that it'll snap down really hard. And I, it, I did that and it pinched my hand and made me bleed and it was super painful. So, you know, the rules are there for a reason, I know. I was in a hurry, but yeah, don't do that because it does hurt. Or if you do it, be careful. Okay, so this is our um, dye brush, and I definitely need it for this dye. And and I found that these really did come out very easily um, with all the things that they designed to do, to use with that. So um, perfect. I'm gonna end up cutting out a bunch of these here in a couple of weeks for my retreat, and. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that I have done some playing around with it um, so that I know I really need to use the precision plate, use the dye brush, don't try to rush it because you'll be sorry. All right, so I'm just sticking a couple of glue dots um, on those more solid areas. You can use your fine tip glue pen, which would work great if you have a steady hand. It's so cute, right? Think of all the different combinations you could do with this. I just think that's really, really cute. All right, so now let me get one of these hearts out of here. We're going to put that on the tab. Um, you know what? There's another thing I needed to cut really quickly. This is, I have this listed. This, um, come on, this little tag, framelit, is from the Popcorn Thinlets. Let's see, is this the one I use? Yeah, yeah, okay. The Popcorn Thinlets, if you don't have those, you could easily... Well, I say that, but I'm not good at making things even. You could use any tag framelit that you have because this is going to be the to and from. Or you could even just put it on the inside, that white card. But I wanted to add a little tag. So that's where that one's from. When I have my framelits in my office, I actually have them um, kind of broken up into, like if it has, if there's a set that has a tag or a framelit, I mean a tag or a um, banner, I actually have a whole little section aside for all of those because I use them so much. All right, so let's see. I have ink all over me. Um, I'm going to have it like this. So I want to stamp it right there. I love that font on this set, the um, smitten and the to and from is that cute scripty font. All right, so before I lose this heart, let's put this right here on a glue dot, just on that tab. And then, oh, Denise, I can't believe you just now want it. This set was like on my first order because it's just I love die cuts that you can turn into 3d projects you know um, a hand sanitizer holder um, a, a nugget holder um, all kinds of stuff and so that's of course what I thought immediately when I saw this set okay dimensionals dimensionals always and just put it right there and slide that down and there you have it. That's an easy project. So cute. There's that one too with a gift card. All right, so that's project number one. Let me just clean up my mess a little bit. I was thinking last week as I was losing pieces that if I would just take a few seconds to clean up in between each project, then maybe I won't have that problem. Maybe, we'll see. I lose framelits a lot, my friends know my that I am really bad about <laughs> losing framelits and it's because I'm so like I don't want to stop to clean up stopping to clean up is not you know what I want to do when I'm like in the zone I really want to keep going okay so I think I've got everything out of the way we're just going to move it all over here and the next one is a really cute card different colors a gatefold card like that aren't those mittens so cute so this is what I was talking about with these framelits no stamping needed for this mitten it's just cute paper and I like when we have framelits that do that that don't necessarily require the die cutting 
Okay, so let's do the mittens first, okay? Um, let's see which mittens I need. I'm gonna hopefully have put them back. Yep, here they are. These are the ones that I need. And we're gonna cut those out of this paper right here, which is from that same set. Recognize that? That's what I just used on the last project. One side is black and white, and one side is old olive and white. All right, so we need that for the little cuffs. And then let's see, we have these as the sides. I didn't get a piece of white. Oh yeah, I did, it's still right here. I question myself, even though I know I did it. Okay, so let's let's take a look at what we're gonna do first. Um, so this is the cuff right here. And like I was telling you, there are pieces in here that just emboss. So that's what this is. This Actually, this one cuts it out, and this one is going to just emboss that. We have other choices. There's this, and there's this really cool looking one. Um, let's see, another embossing piece would be these little hearts. So you have like an endless possibilities of what you wanna do. So you're just gonna put it in there straight like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get that lined up. Oh, and we need two snowflakes. And we're gonna cut out heart from here also. I use the largest heart from the Sweet and Sassy collection. That's our, our heart framelit set. It's called Sweet and Sassy. All right, let's see how many things I can get on this platform. Now I'm gonna have to do this on the end. It's gonna have to hang off a little bit. Two mittens like that. And then let's see if we can get, mm, we're not gonna be able to get that heart on there for sure. And we have to find a place where this will just be cool. Come on, Framelit, be cool. Don't jump around. This guy, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the wind is so crazy today. I put some things out for the mailman in some boxes and the boxes are empty now and they're blowing all over the front porch which is right outside my window. Is that straight? I can't tell from here. All right, well, we're gonna go with it. And then, do we have room for white? Yeah, I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off and do a white one. All right, I don't know, I can't tell if that's straight, but we're just gonna go with it. All right, we're gonna run them all through. And I'm just gonna come back over here because I have too much junk on that side to take it off. All right, so now we could take those mittens out. Super cute. And then let's see how this guy turned out. Aha, perfect. See how it's embossed? Like that, really cool. Okay, there's one. Now we gotta do another one because we have two mittens. And I'm gonna keep this over here because I need to cut that heart out also. No, come on, framelit. But sometimes they just, they're like children. They don't want to do what you tell them to do. And so they squirm. All right, come on. Goodness, this one's being extra difficult. Aye. Okay, we're going to move it. Maybe it just needs to go somewhere else. Um, this is a side effect of having a plate full of magnets. The magnets sometimes turn and... Then when you have two magnets, I used to teach this in my first grade class, when you have two magnets with the same sides facing each other, then things push apart. So, uh oh, we have to move it. Ah, um, So that seems to be what's happening. And it doesn't really seem to affect the bigger, <laughs> the bigger frame. Look at that. Okay, I'm getting a post-it note. So this is how we used to do it before we had um, let me go ahead and put that on there. Before we had magnetic platforms, which at the moment don't seem like they're that much help, but I do love my magnetic platform. Okay, so you just put, put a post-it note on there when it's being ornery and run it through. Okay, do I have everything? I think so, okay. It does have a mind of its own, Darcy, that's right. And it, isn't quite as frustrating as when you're trying to do a video, I think. It's like, seriously, you're gonna embarrass me like this? You're gonna act like a my children in church? Okay, I think I got it. I'm gonna put my framelits back so that they don't run away. Here's my heart, isn't that pretty? This is Berry Burst and in color, and I think it looks fantastic. 
with this old olive. We're gonna emboss this with, I can never remember the name, let me look at it, the Winter Wonderland Embossing Folder. This is one of those um, embossing or um, uh, products that really, I did not see the first like five times that I um, looked through the catalog. It's on the on the page with all the, the um, gold and champagne and all that, like kind of like the New Year's Eve type stuff. It's on there and you can't see it, but it's super cute. And it puts a snowflake. I had to skip my other platform because I had, you can't emboss with your magnetic platform. So it's gonna put a um, snowflake in the middle of my heart. The magnetic platform is too thick for an embossing folder, so you have to use your regular uh, platform. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Okay, I think we're done with that. Let's put these all together. Um, we're gonna put the little cuffs. It's been very cold here in South Texas, you know, like in the 50s. <laughs> and my kids have been wearing their mittens in the morning. We're super cold. So, you know, it's mitten, it's mitten weather definitely when, sometimes even in the 60s um, here in South Texas. That's winter weather for us. All right, so these are the little snowflakes. I'm going to put them on with the stamp and Dimensional. Uh, like this. And then, uh-oh, things are starting to disappear. I am not being nice and neat like I wanted to be. And I was going to put this paper back so that I did not stamp on my table again. Okay, here are our mittens. These are the gold faceted gems. They're kind of antique -y looking. So we're gonna put those like that. All right, our card is ready to go. So, you know what, maybe we should do the stamping before we put it all together. I decided to use that cute little smitten sentiment um, on this. I just love that font. And I'm using um, Berry Burst ink to go along with that heart. And I'm gonna punch, actually, you know what, I think I'm gonna punch first. Because inevitably, I always punch and then it's too far. So this is smaller, you can see, there are these two lines right here that you would wanna guide those in. But I'm gonna eyeball it, and I can even turn it over. Let's do that and see how we do. Turn it over. Oh, there we go. Good enough. All right, so let's stamp smitten right there. And I'm actually gonna trim it so it's short. And then this is the piece that goes on the inside. And I'm going to stamp, these are some of the little, I think they look like cross stitching, cross stitched hearts. And then I'm going to, see, I think I'm going to do it different than I did on the original. Oh, no. All right. I'm going to do this in Old Olive. And then I'm going to take this cross-stitch chart. I'm going to stamp it off one time and just do it in the middle. Let's see. Oh, cute. Okay. Time to put it all together. 28 to 30 here. Oh, Jessica. Ooh, that's like Antarctica. Too cold for my South Texas blood. I do really like when it cools off though, because you know, we have 100 degree weather for like six months straight with really no break. So then in the fall and in the um, winter, when we have some change in the weather, whether it be 70s, 60s, or maybe colder like it is today, um, it's really a nice break. So I enjoy it, but I know if I lived somewhere that was cold all, all year, then I would feel, you know, I would feel the opposite. Because when you have a weather, some kind of weather constantly, then it's not fun at all. Okay, so what I did here, this is called a gatefold card, and it is a regular half piece of cardstock, old olive, but I scored it at two and three fourths and eight and a fourth. And then I put two pieces of Whisper White on either side of that gate. Um, and then I'm gonna get my trimmer, which is somewhere around here. It's hiding from the last time I used it. And I'm just gonna cut this heart right in half. 
Just line the that point up with a gutter and this point up with a gutter and just cut like that. Or just cut <laughs> with more pressure. Let's see, what is happening? All right, it looks like I need a new blade. I know, we've all been going through blades really quickly. Oh man, okay, let's see if I can uh, just clean it up a little bit. It's all right, it's gonna be covered by the mittens anyway, but I still, okay, there we go. All right, so let's put Fast Fuse on the back. And we're gonna put it right there on that edge. Okay, and then this one. Oh, I wanna line it up, so let's make sure it's together. Like that. See how it comes together, so cute. All right, now we're gonna use some dimensionals again. And I'm gonna make this one right here, just like at the edge. Let me open that, you see how that's just touching the edge? So just like that. And then this one's gonna overlap that a little bit, like that. See how it's going to overlap, but yet it's not going to get in the way of opening it. All right, there, cute. Let's put the smitten on there, right? Whoops, gotta close it the left one first and then the right one, we'll put that there. Then the last thing is the ribbon. And I wanna tell you that I first, this is the um, Berry Burst Woven Ribbon. It is, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. Well, it says half an inch. Um, it is, it was too thick. The bow is too thick. So look what I've done. You can see I've cut it just up the middle to make it half the, the width. So now it's skinny ribbon. And it kind of frays on the end. And I love it when it does that. Because it adds a little more, a little more texture to your, to your bow and your card. All right, snip, snip, get a dement, I mean a glue dot on this one. And like that. And there you have it. Now, one thing that I did, you see how it keeps popping up, popping up? And this is probably really kind of weird and there's probably a better solution. But I put a glue dot here and then I just take my finger and like make it way less sticky. You know, like, I guess it's probably getting dirty from my finger, but it's still sticky enough to hold it closed for a little while, but it easily opens. That's what I did over here. You can see how it stays closed. It's just kind of a glue dot that you've taken some of the sticky out of. All right, so there we go. There's the second project. I hope you guys like that color combination. I am... Um, was gonna do red and then I thought no let's do something a little bit different this pink and green my dorm room well no it wasn't my dorm room my apartment bedroom when I was in college we bought a college apartment that some girls had lived in before the room was was those were those colors and I didn't think I liked pink then and then I lived in that room and I fell in love with pink so pink and green are a good combination okay one more project Cleaned my desk. Now I can find everything, hopefully. This is a treat bag. And it is a treat bag made with a gift bag punch board. I'm gonna show you how to use that. Um, but also, this is something really cute that I learned by watching the Stamping Up video. There is a framelit on here that kind of looks like, it. to me, I was thinking it looks like a, a needle threader, you know, those little tools that you use to thread a needle, but it's designed to, to turn your mitten into a pot holder. How cute, right? I never would have figured that out had I not watched the video. So that's what we're gonna do because this I like to bake and we always send some, some kind of baked goods. So we're gonna turn this into a pot holder. Um, let's make the bag first though. Um, I think if we make the bag first, that will be better. This is um, the gift bag punch board and I will admit to you that I don't always love the punch boards. Hold on, let me get a drink real quick. Okay, I am not great with the punch boards. 
But the gift bag punch board is the easiest one, and I do really like it. It is um, easier to, to make projects, I think. Okay, so the directions are on the, the, the board itself. It'll tell you, trim your paper if you want a small bag, a medium bag, a large bag. I'm doing a medium bag. And then you can do the length of the paper between four, four and 12 inches. You know, you want it big, tall, short, whatever, you decide. So I am doing an 11, it's 11 inches by six inches. And we're gonna focus on that medium line. And I mean, it has all these guides for you, so it really isn't very hard. So you're gonna line it up right here on the edge and just punch. Now I'm saying it's so easy and I will probably screw it up because I said it was easy, so I have to really focus. Okay, so punch there. Now we're gonna score the medium line. Each time we also need to do this horizontal line. All right, now every other time we need to make the side because this is the front and then we need a side. So the side has these lines right here and it even has these little um, diagonal lines because those are kind of making a, a, a pleat in your bag. All right, so we've, did I punch? Yep, you always punch. And so we have the front and the side and this will be another front or back of your bag. So line it up with that line, that little pointer thing, punch, and then we were doing medium, so we do the medium line. Come down. And so we did si uh, front, side, back, and now we need a side again. Do all the lines that it tells you. It has little arrows and stuff, so, you know, like score here, score there. And then the last thing you need to do is punch the last score line that you have right here. And that's it. Easy. And you just have to, you know, you have to focus. And I think that's probably my problem when I'm using the punch boards is that I'm not really paying attention. I'm hurrying. I'm always hurrying. I'm a, I'm a hurry up crafter. Now we're going to trim this off right here. We don't need that tab. And I'm also going to trim this one here at an angle. That way it won't. Uh, poke up. We're going to fold all of our score lines and if you're fancy and you want to use your bone folder, go for it. I'm going to be non-fancy and just use my fingers. All right, let's put some fast fuse right here and you just fold that over and it should line up perfectly. Yay, I love when that happens. Okay, so fold the sides in and then I'm going to put adhesive on these larger tabs. Fast fuse or tear and tape, you want to use that. Let's see, I want this edge to the back, so I'm going to fold over that side first and then the front. That'll give you a clean edge on all three sides. There you go. And so here's the side. I told you it was kind of like a pleat where you can pinch it and it goes in. And there you go, and you know, that's not gonna hold too many treats, so you're not gonna be needing to bake too much if you use these bags. I love the gift bag punch board. I have used it a lot since it came out. All right, so we're using this solid stamp right here and cherry cobbler. And when you have a photopolymer stamp that is solid, sometimes you need to put, if your surface underneath is kind of wobbly or not very solid, Oh, that didn't turn out well. You need to use a foam mat, which you know what, I think I'm gonna get. Well, let's see, here's one. I don't need a foam mat normally. Um, I, I always say at my card class though, um, we need the foam mats there because we use like fold up tables. Why is that doing that, goodness? Let's try it again, that's why we have extra cardstock. We always use a foam mat there because the table kind of gives a little bit. Much better. Okay, let's cut that off, yuck. We don't wanna look at that. All right, so now we need the big shot again. So just know if you're getting a weird, like what you just saw me do twice, if you're getting that when you stamp, get a foam mat. Um, you can use our piercing mat. 
You can use um, a piece of the thick fun foam from the craft store. Um, there are other things out there that you can use, but just a piece of foam, which will give it a little more, um, you know, a little more cushion so that that, that stamp can kind of fill in in all those places. All right, now remember, we have to cut this little, this little doodad out because that is the little holder for the, the uh, oven mitt. I am using cherry cobbler today on this one because I love our stitched cherry cobbler ribbon and I wanted to use that, but I also, I don't want to lose that framelit, better put it back. I also wanted to use this cute paper. Um, this Christmas paper is from the regular annual catalog and it's really good, traditional uh, red and green. It is called... Who knows it? I don't. I don't know it off the top of my head. Let me look. It is called Be Merry Designer Series Paper. And it is really good traditional Christmas paper. If you are a traditional girl or guy and you want red and green, check this paper out because it's really good. And the base color is Whisper White, not very vanilla, which I also like. All right, so here's a circle. I'm just going to put it on with a dimensional. And I'm going to put this guy on with a glue dot, the little doodad, the loop, I guess we should call it the loop. Yes, Crystal, I agree. And that's, I meant to point that out. I'm glad you said that. This is um, not, you know, this is a set that really can be used for much more than Christmas because you've got your, your oven mitt, but you've got snowflakes and mittens, which will go through the winter also for many of you. For many of us, I don't know, our leaves start growing leaves back in February, so we don't have very long for mittens. Um, this is the banner triple punch again. And let's see if, I feel like that's a little bit too long. Let's just trim it. All right. So I'm just going to attach these together using a dimensional. And this guy, I turned it like this so that would be sticking out so you could really see it. Because I want them to know that that is a mitt, oven mitt, not a mitten. Like that. All right, so now a few more dimensionals. I hope you guys have dimensionals at home because to, to make my projects, you need like a hundred of them. All right, stick it on. Cute, cute, cute. I like crumb cake with these two colors. And there's the clip. Last thing we need is that ribbon I was telling you about. This is the stitched cherry cobbler ribbon, which I think is on back order right now, so I'm not the only one who loves it. When you tie this ribbon, let me show you that. One side is X's and one side is stitches. So depending on what you want, and I want the X's, you're going to have to, see if I push my loop through like that, I'm going to have the stitches. So when you push your loop through, make sure that it, I'm going to twist it right here so that it goes through with those X's on the outside. If you wanted the stitches, then you would twist it the other way. And it looks like that one's going to have the stitches. All right, a little glue dot. Thank you, Laurie. I don't know if you were here in the beginning, but you won the door prize from last week. Congratulations. You guys know I just look up every now and then. I just happen to see her comment. Okay, there it is. A little treat bag with an oven mitt. Let's get them all three out together and look again and see why you need the Smitten Mitten Bundle. Lots of versatility here, not just for Christmas. Like we said, this could be, you know, even winter, and this could be Valentine's Day or Christmas, because that one says, may you have many merry moments surrounded by those you love. Either way. All right. I hope you guys like them. Just to review, remember that if you put an order in, in the next four days by Monday night using this hostess code. I'm going to send you all three projects, uh, make and take kits for free. Hop over to my blog so you can enter for a chance to win the hostess set. 
um, download your project sheets so you have everything you need and let me know if you have any questions and I need some suggestions you guys what do you want to see um, I've got the next four weeks are super busy for me so if I can start planning ahead for Facebook Friday um, that would be really great all right have a wonderful weekend you guys thanks so much for tuning in bye